Hi, my name is Nozomi from Japan, and I never thought anyone noticed me. Not until I met the sleeping boy. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start at the beginning. Like and subscribe, you won't regret it. Growing up, the only person who ever noticed me was my big sister Akari. My mom traveled for work so much that I even called Akari mom when I was too little to understand what was going on. My sister would take me to school where I would sit in silence and never say a word to anyone until she picked me up again. And then I wouldn't shut up the whole way home. But she didn't mind. She liked hearing me talk and she liked playing games with me, like making me look like one of her dolls. She would also give me a makeover using our mom's makeup or dress me up as a monster and have me chase her around the house. Rawr, I'm gonna eat your head. My head? Yeah, it's the yummiest part. You really are a little monster. Rawr! When we got older, our mom moved to another country for work. She asked if we wanted to come, but we decided to stay. Akari had graduated from university and had a real job now, so we didn't have much time to hang out. But every Friday, I would wait for her at the train station near my school for when she got out of work, and we would hang out all weekend. And even though we grew up, nothing really changed, except now we didn't play dress up anymore. Now we dressed up for real to go out to dinner or the arcade or whatever we wanted. We had the best life. The only problem was, I was still too shy to talk to anyone, especially boys. One time when we were at the arcade, I saw a boy staring at us. Akari elbowed me. He's looking at you, Nozomi. Go talk to him. My cheeks got so red, my hands all clammy. I suddenly froze up and couldn't even play the games anymore. Okay, okay, let's go home. You don't have to talk to any boys. But you know, it would make me really happy if you tried, at least once, for me. Maybe you can talk to a boy for me. Then I won't have to do any work. She gave me a dirty look, but she was only kidding. I knew she was right. I just had no idea how I would ever talk to a boy. Then one Friday, the train that was supposed to arrive didn't come. And suddenly, I got a really bad feeling. After 30 minutes, the train finally came. But Akari wasn't on it. I called and called, but she didn't answer. Then finally, I got a call, but it was from a random number. Hello? Is this Akari's sister, Nozomi? This is the hospital. Your sister was in an accident. She's in a coma. All the air left my lungs. In the hospital, I found her lying there with her head bandaged. She looked like she was sleeping. They didn't know how, but she fell onto the tracks and hit her head. The doctor said it was impossible to know when she would wake up. From that day on, I started visiting her every day. I usually read to her, but one day I forgot my book, so I just talked. And when I left, I ran into the nurse in the hallway. If you have time, maybe you can talk to him too. He's in a coma like your sister. I think he was part of the accident she was involved with. He was? I think so. But we don't know who he is. He didn't have any ID when he was brought in. He had no one to visit him? I felt so sad. I imagined my sister being here all alone, with no one to talk to her all day. Before I knew it, I was in his room. He looked a couple of years older than me. I sat down beside his bed and without even realizing it, I was just talking to him just like I talked to Akari. 30 minutes later, I was finally out of things to talk about. That's when I realized something. You know, you're the only boy I've ever talked to. You're a really good listener. I started bringing two books to the hospital every day after that. One for my sister and one for the boy with no name. Something strange happened after I was reading to him for a few days. Every night when I went home, I would think about him and even dream that we met and talked and fell in love. I realized it was ridiculous to fall in love with someone I didn't even know. And the next day, when I read to him, I tried to push the thoughts away. But for some reason, I just couldn't help but think, maybe it was love at first sight. That night, I decided to leave the book I had been reading to him in the hospital closet so I wouldn't forget it. But when I opened it, I saw there was a leather sketchbook inside. I opened it and saw that it was drawings of people at the train station. Every page was a different person. I flipped until I found my sister. I couldn't believe it. I realized then that the nurse was right. They must have been in the same accident and it gave me a great idea. Maybe if I could find out what happened, I could find out who he was. I went to the train station from his drawings. It was the same one Akari used to come and see me after work on Fridays. I saw a woman waiting for the train. Excuse me, do you know about an accident that happened here a few weeks ago? Yes, I was here. 
A young woman fell from the platform as the train was coming and she hit her head. She would have died, but then the boy jumped down and picked her up. But as he pulled her away, the side of the train hit his back and he fell too. Whoa, the boy I had been reading to all this time had saved my sister's life. Maybe I wasn't so ridiculous for having feelings for him. Maybe it was destiny. Then the woman pointed to an elderly lady. That older woman, I think it's the boy's grandmother. She's been coming here every day waiting for him. We tell her he's in the hospital, but she doesn't remember. I was so sad to see her waiting there for him. I wanted to tell her what happened. Excuse me, ma'am. Are you waiting for your grandson? Yes, he's never late. I don't know what happened. But I decided if she couldn't remember anything, maybe it wasn't a good idea to tell her something so terrible like he's in a coma and might never wake up. But I couldn't leave her there like that, waiting for him. She had a cane and looked very weak. I'm sure he'll come home soon. Can I help you get home? I walked with her as she told me stories about how kind and wonderful her grandson was. His name is Kenji. He's always drawing. He takes care of me. With every word she spoke about him, I was falling more and more in love. But then I realized, oh no, without him, she had no one to take care of her. After I walked her home, I went to the market and bought a bunch of food and took it to her house where we both cooked while she told me more stories about him. I always tell him he needs to meet a girl and have a life of his own, but he says he doesn't have time for girls. He says it's because of his work, but I know it's because he takes care of me every day. But there is one girl he likes a lot. He always draws her. See? She pointed to a stack of drawings. I looked through them all. They were all of Akari waiting at the train station. I couldn't believe it. He was in love with her. My heart broke into a million pieces. The love I felt for him, it was all for nothing. And what was worse, if they both woke up, they would probably end up together and I would have to watch. Still, I couldn't let his grandmother be alone with no one to take care of her. So every day, I would take the train and find her there waiting for him. And every day, we would cook while she told me stories about how wonderful he was. I had to smile, but I wanted to cry. And every night after visiting her, that's exactly what I did. I cried on the train ride home, on the walk and in my bed. And every day, I would get up, go to the hospital, read to my sister, and then read to him. And then one day, I stopped reading and just talked. You know, Kenji, you're still the only boy I've ever talked to. And to be honest, the only boy I've ever loved. When you wake up, everything will be different. I'll miss spending time with you, but I hope we can at least be friends. One night while I was sleeping, I got a phone call. Hello? Fantastic news. Your sister woke up and she's doing really well. I ran to the hospital and found her sitting there eating pudding. She smiled big when she saw me. I hugged her so tight she begged me to let go. Before we left, I asked the nurse, Can I come back to see him again? I'm sorry, but we don't allow anyone up here except family. I wasn't supposed to let you visit him at all, but I felt so bad. Oh, I see. Can I say goodbye? She nodded and went to Kenji's room. When you wake up, I'll make sure you and my sister meet again. Oh, and don't worry. I'll take care of your grandmother until then. Goodbye, sleeping boy. I asked if Akari remembered anything, but she didn't. I heard a boy saved your life when you fell. Really? I would love to meet him one day. I'm sure you will. Fate has a way of making things happen. After that, Akari was still too hurt to work, so she just lived with me. But I kept seeing Kenji's grandmother every day to make sure she ate and was doing okay. One day, I knocked on his grandmother's door, and when it opened, it wasn't her on the other side. It was Kenji. I... I... Hello. Are you looking for my grandmother? Yes. She told me someone was taking care of her while I was sick, but she couldn't remember your name. Thank you. Then he gave me a big hug, and all the thoughts I was trying to push away about being in love with him came back. He invited me inside, and we all had dinner. And this time, he had done all the cooking. And it was delicious. While we sat and ate, I realized all the stories his grandmother had told about him were true. He was kind, sweet, funny. Then he asked me to wait while he put her to bed. 
After, he asked if we could talk outside. I said yes, but to my surprise, instead of going out the door, he went to a ladder that led up to the attic. Wait, why up there? This is where I go to draw when my grandmother goes to bed. And tonight, there will be fireworks. He went up and I followed him, even though I hated heights. He led me to a window and stepped out. He sat on the roof and I sat beside him looking over the faraway city. The lights twinkled like stars. So, how did you meet my grandmother? Oh no, I hadn't thought about this part. If I told him the truth, I would have to say that I read to him in the hospital. At the train station? She was always waiting for you. Which wasn't a lie, exactly. But now that meant I couldn't even tell him thank you for saving my sister's life. Maybe if I ask him about the accident, it will all come out naturally. But he said he couldn't remember what had happened. I felt so foolish for not telling him the truth just to save myself from a little embarrassment. All he did was be nice to me. I decided I owed him for saving Akari. So even though I would be humiliated and look stupid, I would tell him the truth. But before I could, he said, I kind of remember a little. There was this girl. I think she fell. I was in love with... I know. You know? How could you know? I saw your drawing of her. Your grandmother showed me. You were in love with her. That's why you jumped and saved her. Actually, no. I was in love with her sister. I couldn't breathe. Did he just say what I think he said? He looked down at the ground and said, Every Friday, the girl from my drawings and I would get on the same train. Sometimes we talked a little. She said she was meeting her sister and she started telling me about her. What she was like. She was cool and funny and she was... When she would get off, her sister would meet her and I guess it was love at first sight. Like we were meant to be. Sorry, I must sound stupid. Good thing he wasn't looking at me or maybe he would have seen the hearts in my eyes. Why did you draw her sister and not the girl you liked? I only saw her for a few seconds every day, but I always tried. Then he showed me his book of drawings, and all the way in the back, there were drawings of parts of a girl, never the full picture, since he drew from memory but never saw her fully. It was me. I couldn't believe it. After the accident, I can't remember what they looked like. I went to the station today, but I didn't see anyone who could have been her or her sister. I guess I'll never see her again. Actually, you're looking at her right now. He turned to me, confused. And then his eyes lit up and he recognized me. But how? I don't understand. I put my hand on his and kissed him. Just then, the sky exploded with fireworks. I pulled away and looked into his eyes. It's a little complicated. Let's just say I took care of you.